Uh, so hi everyone. Today we'll try to understand how to calculate non-linear correlation using a new metric called as a distance correlation metric. And later on we'll also see how distance correlation metric is different from Pearson's correlation metric. So let's understand what is distance correlation metric. So basically, uh, giving a head start. So whenever we need to calculate correlation between variables in a data set, what we actually do is we pick up the default implementation of either NumPy or Pandas, like uh, NumPy dot uh, C uh, course coefficient or data frame dot uh, correlation. Using these functions, we're trying to uh, calculate the correlation between variables. Now there is an implementation SciPy also, but I won't be discussing that. But an important point that we uh, actually miss out is the default implementation implements Pearson's correlation, which is known to have capture only linear relationships. For example, uh, it can capture relationships like y equals to 2x or y equals to 0.5x, but it won't be able to capture relationship like y equals to 2, point, uh, 2 plus 2 into uh, exponential of x square or y equals to 0.5x cube or, or some sine cosine functions that are non-linear relationships. Right. So in this case, uh, if we have uh, non-linear relationships in our data set, Pearson correlation might miss them. So, and if you have worked on some uh, real world projects, so and in real world, things are not perfectly linear relationships. Things you will be finding non-linear relationship most of the time. Uh, now coming to the second part, the other implementation present in NumPy or be it uh, Pandas or be it SciPy are Spearman and Candle Tau correlation metrics that also don't capture non-linear relationships. So now uh, uh, we have hit a point where we don't have any options to calculate non-linear relationships, uh, non-linear correlation. So uh, is there, there any method that we can use? So recently I figured out about distance correlation metrics. So I will be discussing about distance correlation metrics in this video. So a big advantage of distance correlation is that it is able to capture both linear and non-linear relationships. So you can take that uh, Pearson's correlation results uh, can be a subset of distance correlation metric. Also, distance correlation metrics ranges from 0 to 1, where 0 means there is no correlation. And as the value increases, the correlation between the two variables increases. Negative or positive, it is not able to tell that also. So it is not able to give you a direction. But as in case of Pearson's correlation, we have a range from minus 1 to 1. So any value going below 0 it becomes a negative correlation and any value going above zero becomes a positive correlation but this is not the case with distance correlation you can't have a direction also if you think a uh, case is like uh, <clears throat> i will be showing you a case where you will get to understand why distance correlation uh, doesn't have a direction so let's first of all understand a few a few prerequisites and then we'll jump on to how to calculate distance correlation so the first thing is to know what is a distance matrix so assume that we have two uh, two set of metrics matrix a of dimension a cross b and matrix B of dimension M cross B, where A and M are vectors of size B each. So basically matrix A is a collection of A vectors and matrix B is a collection of M vectors. Now distance matrix is nothing, uh, uh, is, a di is of dimension A cross M, where what we will be doing is uh, we will be calculating the distance between each of the possible pair between uh, all the vectors present in matrix A and matrix B and eventually filling the values in the matrix accordingly. So if you look at this example from Wikipedia, Assume that we have six points. We have placed all the six points here. Now to calculate a distance uh, matrix for these six points, what we will be doing, we'll be calculating the distance between each of the corresponding points pro provide, uh, provided in that particular uh, column. For example, if you look into the second cell, uh, where the column is two and the row is one, that means we need to calculate distance between point one and two. Similarly, if you look at uh, column, if you look at column three and row five, the distance between 3 and 5 is 2, which is calculated, you call calculating the number of uh, nodes present. Similarly, hence, distance metric is nothing, but it is the metrics uh, that provides us information about the distance between the two possible vector pairs uh, that are present in the space. Now, the matrix, metric used for calculating distance can be Euclidean distance or cosine similarity or something else. Or Manhattan distance, you can pick up any similarity metric for that. Now coming to the next important topic that is distance covariance. So using distance matrix, we will be calculating a distance covariance. So distance covariance will be calculated between two metrics X and Y. So first of all, we will be calculating the distance matrix between X and X and Y and Y. This makes sense, right? So in place of uh, having 
uh, matrix in matrix we will be having matrix x matrix x and another time we will be having matrix y and matrix y it can be taken as self distance co covariance also uh, so once we are able to calculate that distance matrix for self pairs x and x and y and y will be centering the two distance matrix that we have got how to do that uh, it is very easy uh, for, for each of the value present in the distance matrix for x and distance matrix for y we will be adding the mean of distance matrix x minus mean of that particular row and mean of the particular column for that particular cell in both the cases so as you can see in this particular code snippet we are looping over all the values present in the two uh, distance matrix for x and distance matrix for y as you can see we are looping over n cross n where n is a dimension for both the matrices and centered x and center is nothing but deep copies so I will tell you, uh, deep copies are nothing but uh, deep copies. Now, as you can see, for each of the value, what we are doing, we are first of all cal we are for the particular value, we are adding the mean for the whole distance matrix for that corresponding distance matrix, then subtracting the mean for that particular row and mean for the particular column to which the particular cell belongs. I think if you look into this particular code snippet, uh, things will become very clear to you. Now, once we have centered the two matrix we need to follow this particular equation we need to multiply the two matrix sum them together divide by power of n uh, divided by n square n is basically the number of elements and do a um, square root over that so n is total number of samples and vectors so this is how we will be calculating distance covariance now coming back to distance correlation so now we have know what is distance matrix we know what is distance covariance now we'll be calculating distance correlation. So for distance correlation, the calculation is very easy. First of all, we'll be calculating distance covariance for variables A and B that are a set of metrics, uh, that is a set of vectors, matrix A and matrix B. And eventually, we'll be calculating standard deviation. So how the standard deviation is calculated? You can look into this particular formula. First, calculate distance covariance. Then calculate the distance covariance between self pairs, x comma x and distance covariance in y and y and do a square root uh, multiply both of them and do a square root this calls this gives us a standard deviation and distance correlation becomes a covariance upon standard deviation pretty easy i think it's more of a mathematical thing rather than to understand the logic so if you can remember how to calculate distance covariance uh, then i think remembering distance uh, correlation has become very easy so this is the whole structure now how to implement this in python so in python we have a a library called as decor decor can help us to calculate distance correlation between two variables two vectors or two matrices so that can be used in this way apart from that uh, what i tried to do is i try to have some multiple relationships and then try to compare their uh, the performance for pearson as well as a uh, distance correlation to check out whether they are able to detect uh, relationships or not so jumping back to the conclusion for linear relationship both of the uh, both the metrics are able to calculate the correlation for exponential linear relationship also the results are almost similar but when talking about quadratic relationship and sinusoidal relationship so quadratic is nothing but you can see here the equation as well as for sinusoidal what we are doing uh, we are having an exponential plus sine or cosine function so in that case Pearson uh, is not able to perform as well as compared to distance correlation so hence you can get that distance correlation can be a better alternate as compared to Pearson as it is able to incorporate Pearson's results as well as it is giving you more information about non-linear relationships that can exist in a data set.